Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to take the contact form that we made in a previous series and transform it into an authorised user support request form, which will mean implementing our own security system, which involves login and registration, for which we aren't going to use Foz User Bundle. I do have courses on Foz User Bundle, which I will link to in the show notes, but doing things by hand, so to speak, will give you a better appreciation as to what Foz User Bundle is actually giving you anyway. The only expected knowledge for this series is to have completed the previous series on implementing this contact form. And there's plenty to cover, so let's get started. To follow along with this video, you must have access to a database. I'm not going to cover how to set up a MySQL database server. I'm going to assume that you have access to one. So if unsure, please do leave a comment and I will try and help you out as best I can. But to be able to interact with our database, we do need to change the contents of parameters YAML, which lives under app config parameters YAML. And you will need to fill in this section with the information relevant to you. Otherwise, you won't be able to proceed any further with this video. We're going to start by generating ourselves an entity. So we're going to use the console with doctrine database create to begin with. This should fail in my case because I already have the database created. But if you don't, then you do need to create your database ahead of time. Then we're going to do a PHP bin console doctrine generate entity. And at this point, you may be wondering what a doctrine entity is. So to clarify, it's simply an object with an identity or to you and me, an object with an ID property. We're going to use the built in entity generator to describe all the properties that should be available on this particular object. And for each of these properties, the generator will create some annotations, which we'll see shortly, which will enable Doctrine behind the scenes to create and manage a database table for this particular object. Now, this sounds quite complicated. And in my experience, a lot of the complication disappears when you actually see it in action. Now, typically in tutorials, you would see the user entity being called user, but it doesn't have to be. So in our case, we're going to call it the member. Could be subscriber or anything like that. Maybe customer, something. Doesn't really matter. Choose your own. And of course, you can go with user. So we're going to get the ID field for free, but we're going to need a username, which is a type string, length 255, and it's not nullable. In other words, this will be a required field, but we do want it to be unique. We'll also want the email, which again is a string, 255. We don't want it to be nullable, but we do want it to be unique. And we're also going to want to capture the password, which again will be a string. This time it only needs to be 64 characters long. And of course it doesn't need to be unique and that should be enough. So as it says, it's generated as an entity class at app bundle entity member, and it's generated as a repository class, which we're not really going to need, but we'll have a look at it anyway. So inside our source, app bundle, entity, generated as that member. And you can see it's hooked up the repository class, which lives here. And as it stands, there's nothing in there. But it's nice to know that that's available. I'll link to more details on what you can use that for in the show notes. But to make this member into a user that Symfony can work with, we do need to go ahead and implement user interface. So I'm going to do that straight away. And we will also need to make our entity serializable as well. Now we're going to need to implement serializable because at the end of each request, our member object is going to be serialized to the session. This means that on the next request from this particular user, we need a way to get that data back out of the session. And the serializable interface ensures that we have to implement both the serialize and unserialize methods on our member entity or object that describe how that data is saved and restored. Now there's only certain fields that we actually need to serialize, which in our case are going to be the ID, the username and the password, but we don't need to worry about that immediately. Now that's going to mean that we need some additional methods. So I'm going to hit command and N on the Mac to implement those methods. And you can see we need five. We need get roles, get salt, erase credentials. And then for serializable, we need serialize and unserialize. Now we'll come back to this entity as needed. But for now, I'm just going to save it and we're going to start using it in the very next video.